Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Karen and I are going to share a few verses to you from 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. That's our assignment. That is our duty. Our duty yes. That is what our calling is. This mm -hmm. is a battle that we are in for the weapons of our warfare. And that's mm -hmm. also Peter said that the devil is our adversary. And also Ephesians 6, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. So now we have to have some weapons here in order to stand against what our adversary is trying to do because we can't see him. So you are saying we are in a warfare? We are in a warfare. A real warfare. A real warfare. A real warfare. And, and it's really all about truth and lies. The Bible is a book of truth. It's a Bible, it's a book that tells us that within us, we have a sin nature. There isn't a book out there that I know of that reveals that there is a nature in man called a sin nature and why it happened. Other than the Bible. The Bible is and, the book. I mean, the other book that's been based on this Bible yes, explaining e that truth. Exactly. Yeah, so if we're in a warfare, that means that we really have to be prepared. That's right. And that if we're not, and we don't recognize that we're in a warfare, we could really get sucked in and destroyed without even really knowing it because yeah. we're not even fighting against it. Right, and, and it's all about, are we believing a lie? We've got to make sure that we understand the weapons of our, are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to what? Pulling down strongholds in our minds and praying for other people that strongholds would come down in their minds so that the light of the glorious gospel would shine onto them. And so our assignment is what? Cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Yeah, against God. Against, against the God. knowledge of God. Right, so that tells me too, Karen, that we have to have the knowledge. We have to have the truth. We have to put, allow this word to be in our lives because if we don't let the truth in, how are we gonna know what the truth is when the lie comes? It sounds like we have a lot of responsibility yes, we to do. be paying attention watching out, reading right. the word to understand what that knowledge is, right. to understand who our enemy is, and what do we have for weapons to combat that enemy? Exactly, so if we don't feed upon the word, if we don't continue in the word, if we don't let that word to be f first place in our life, then the lie is going to get in, and you know what's gonna happen? The more that we're not in the word, the more our tongue seems to change and go according wrong, to the course of this world. The wrong direction. Right. Yes. And the Bible says in James, no man can tame the tongue. Only the Holy Spirit can come in, who's the spirit of truth, can come in and work with you to get your tongue lined up to truth so that you are being trained to speak what the Word of God says. And our words do mean a lot because we have the power to speak life or death with our words. That's right. And that's what the Bible says. Yes, life and death is right. in, in the, the power, power of the of tongue. tongue. So if the devil gets a hold of your life and he starts lying to you and then all you're doing is coming back forth with a lie and you know, agreeing with them. agreeing, you know, you've got to realize because it says cast down imaginations and every, every high thing, thing that exalts itself, itself against, against the, the knowledge, knowledge of God, God and bringing all thoughts into In, the obedience yes. of Christ, the anointed one mm -hmm. who is our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. So we have a plan. Yeah. And we need to follow that plan. And only the Bible is going to give you the right direction of how to live this life and be victorious. And not only we're trying to be victorious in our own life, but we're trying to bring others into that yes. victory and to be able to help them along in their journey because it is a matter of life and death. Yes, and it it's not even just this life, Amen. but it's the eternal life forever and ever. Where are you going to spend that time? 
And we want that to be in the presence of God Almighty. So we thank God for sending his son to die for us on the cross. And through that precious blood of Jesus, now we can live with a new birth, believing in his death, burial, and resurrection. And we can begin to communicate, think about things that are good and lovely. And this is a battle, but it's this battle. is our assignment. And this is what God's called us to do. Blessings to you and yours in Jesus' name. Amen.